Hey everyone, welcome to another open series video. This one will be on Chrysalis phase one. We'll talk about how it connects to Cordyside phase two and what the main benefits are. And we'll briefly touch up on Chrysalis phase two as well. I'm Jakub Czech, director of engineering here at IF. <music> So with Chrysalis phase one, we've actually concluded a stage of mainnet that we call IOTA 1.0 and we're now running on what we call IOTA 1.5 and we're already working on Chrysalis phase two and we also have a parallel effort uh, that we call Cordyside or IOTA 2.0. For Cordyside, we're already running on a testnet called Pollen. And on Pollen, we're actually uh, building up all the Cordyside uh, components into the network and implementing them. And this will result in what we call Nectar, where we will have all the Cordyside components implemented and ready to be tested as one. Uh, and we will be battle testing it, uh, auditing it up until a stage that we call Honey. And Honey uh, will then allow us to transition the main net to a Cordyside network pretty much. So with IOTA 1.5 and specifically the Chrysalis phase one, we mainly wanted to tackle speed, security and the experience on the network, uh, just so that it, the experience is better for everyone, no matter whether you are a wallet user or someone building something on top of the network. So we've lowered the milestone issuance rate. Previously, that was 80 seconds. And right now we've lowered that to 10 seconds. Uh, this allows for way faster confirmations. And we've also introduced a way more efficient tip selection algorithm. And this allows the network to process more transactions than before. So previously, Tip selection was quite a bottleneck on the network because it was pretty heavy. Uh, but right now it allows the network to handle way more TPS than, uh, than it did in the previous version. And the coordinator can also approve way more transactions thanks to the milestone selection algorithm that we have. Uh, we've also introduced a concept called white flag. And white flag enables us to use the more efficient tip selection algorithm that we've uh, implemented in the node software. White flag also eliminates specific attack scenarios that were possible on the network before and that were able to uh, significantly lower the confirmation rate for a period of time. And these are now completely eliminated thanks to that. And a part of Crystallis phase one was also auto peering. But if you're familiar with Hornet, then you probably know that we've actually released that ahead of time. Uh, so the benefits uh, with Crystallis phase one, if you're a wallet user, then in general, your transactions will get confirmed way faster than before. So on average, it should take several seconds, even at high TPS. Uh, previously, uh, if the network reached a high TPS, uh, many of the nodes would struggle uh, and they would fall behind, they would not be in sync with the network and that uh, negatively affected the confirmation rate at the network as well. And your transactions just in general are uh, going to get confirmed more reliably than before. So we've almost eliminated the need for reattachment and promotion, even though the Trinity wallet takes care of that automatically. Uh, it should not now not be needed uh, in most of the cases at all. And things like conflicting transactions and other scenarios don't really affect the confirmation rate anymore, as I mentioned. And uh, when it comes to uh, developers and partners, so if you're building something uh, on top of the Tangle, if you're working on a POC, if you're uh, planning to deploy something on the Tangle or are already running something on the Tangle, then uh, the network uh, can now support way more traffic than it ever did before. On Comnet, which is uh, exactly the same uh, implementation that we have on mainnet now, uh, we've reached around 1500 TPS for a period of time 
and uh, the network in general is just way more stable than before, even at higher TPS. And running nodes is also much simpler than before. So if you want to participate in the network, or if you need to uh, spin up a couple nodes uh, yourself just to test a couple scenarios or build something, uh, then uh, with things like auto peering, this is much simpler now because you can just fire up the node. You don't have to uh, manually connect to other peers that you have to know of and things like that. I'll briefly talk about Chrysalis Phase 2 as well. So Chrysalis Phase 2 already in progress. We're already working on the new wallet. We're already working on the new client libraries. And we're already implementing the change transaction layout in node software, for example. But in general, this will be and is a much larger effort than Chrysalis Phase 1, because everything needs to change. Uh, the node software, the client libraries, Everything that takes any kind of dependency on those will have to adjust to the new APIs and everything will have to be updated. Even products like streams will have to adjust, for example. But this also introduces a lot of benefits to the network. So, for example, we will be supporting reusable addresses with Chrysalis Phase 2. So you will be able to send tokens from the same address more than once safely. And this is something that actually enables a lot of scenarios that were only possible with workarounds before and with a lot of uh, extra implementation underneath in any kind of client library, for example. We are also getting rid of bundles. Uh, bundles were a construct uh, that we had in the past uh, and still do, but we're getting rid of that with Chrysalis Phase 2 and replacing that with atomic transactions and binary transaction layout. And this will make development easier for everyone, for us and for anyone else. Uh, and this also removes the need for a larger amount or for a large amount of binary to trinary conversions. So everything uh, is way more efficient than before. And we're also working on high-level APIs for the client libraries. So all the client libraries will be rewritten for Chrysalis Phase 2 and will also have uh, high-level APIs available. So these uh, APIs will make uh, integrating on top of IOTA and developing anything uh, with the client libraries much easier than before. They will make it much easier to maintain than before. And we're also working on a brand new node API that will be available in both Hornet and in B. And we're also already working on a new wallet to replace Trinity that will be releasing with Chrysalis Phase 2. And this new wallet will be using the uh, library that we released a couple of weeks ago called Stronghold that you can read up on, on our blog as well. And we're also introducing the uh, UTXO model. And this allows us to uh, calculate the ledger state in a simpler manner than before. And it also enables the network to support things like colored coins, for example. And we can also later scale the network through paradigms like sharding. This is it for this update, and I uh, hope that you saw the performance improvements that we've introduced with Chrysalis Phase 1 yourself on the network. If not, then just uh, go ahead and try sending a transaction on Trinity, for example. If you're not running a node, then uh, uh, make sure you go ahead and try to run a node. Uh, it's super simple with Hornets. And if you have any question, then feel free to ask uh, on our Discord. Uh, where all of the engineering team is available uh, for any kind of questions. And thank you for listening in.